between 70 and 76 million years ago, in what would one day become Argentina's Santa Cruz province. An animal lived that would help revolutionize the way modern paleontologists looked at herbivorous dinosaurs. With a name that means fears nothing, Dreadnoughtus was a gigantic titanosaur that proved to be very nearly complete when it was unearthed in 2005. This giant of the Cerro Fortaleza formation was one of the largest animals of the Mesozoic, and today we will be meeting it in all its enormous glory. Along the way, we will discover how Dreadnoughtus lived, how it was discovered, and how it compared to the other megasauropods of the late Cretaceous. So sit back and relax as we take you back through time to meet a titan among titans. Dreadnoughtus shrani, the sole species within its genus, was a gigantic sauropod from the late Cretaceous of Argentina. Specifically, it was a titanosaur, a member of a diverse group that were extremely successful towards the end of the Mesozoic. Within the clade Titanosauria, it is believed by some to sit within the family Saltasauridae a group of immense, long-necked dinosaurs that typically could be found with tough, dermal armor on their backs. Saltosaurids, such as the closely related Alamosaurus of Hell Creek, USA, were some of the very last non-avian dinosaurs to go extinct, when the infamous meteor slammed into the Earth 66 million years ago. There are some concerns within the paleontological community, however, about its placement within this family due to its overall posture and the structure of its limbs. Dreadnoughtus lived slightly earlier than the latest surviving Saltosaurids. It was alive on Earth between 70 and 76 million years ago, between the Campanian and the Maastrichtian stages of the Cretaceous. Dreadnoughtus's distinguishing feature was its truly immense size. The type specimen, an immature subadult, measured 26 meters or 85 feet in length, and in life would have weighed between 48 to 49 tons. This makes it the biggest land animal whose mass can be calculated with a degree of certainty, and on top of this, fully grown adult individuals would have been capable of growing even larger. The type specimen also grew 6 meters or 20 feet tall at the shoulder and boasted a neck and head length of just over 12 meters or 40 feet. Dreadnoughtus would have grown tall enough to look you in the eye from a second story window, something that no living animal could even come close to. The known elements of Dreadnoughtus, despite coming from two individuals, are unusually complete. They are in fact the most complete of any of the very large titanosaurs and paleontologists have been able to discern much about these Mesozoic giants from looking at this one skeleton alone. It is thought to have been so well preserved because the animal died quickly and became suddenly buried by sediment. It may well have been the unfortunate victim of what is known as a rapid burial event, perhaps caused by a landslide, or if the animal was swept into deep water. Here it would have been quickly covered by mud and sand allowing the fossilization process to occur without the threat of scavengers pulling apart its remains. Studies on Dreadnoughtus's bones have helped scientists to determine the general posture held by large titanosaur dinosaurs as they walked the earth. They typically walked in what has been dubbed the wide gauge posture, where the animal's feet were set apart from the midline of the body. As they walked, their limbs were held slightly outward, more so in the larger specialized species of the titanosaur, and this is where the controversy comes into play. When it walked, Dreadnoughtus did not hold its limbs as widely set as most saltosaurids, and its femur was not articulated inward at the head like its supposed relatives. Some have interpreted this as an indication that Dreadnoughtus was not a saltosaurid at all. Paleontologist Kenneth Lacovara, who was the one to name this dinosaur, 
proposed that when Dreadnoughtus walked, it would have done so in a manner similar to the iconic AT-80 Imperial Walkers from the Star Wars franchise. Dreadnoughtus' bones held a series of features that were notably different from other related dinosaurs. Air sacs were present along the neural spines of its tail, which caused the bones to be divided into cavities. These air sacs would have been a part of the dinosaur's respiratory system, helping to keep it as lightweight as possible to permit it to carry its immense weight around as it walked. Its spine also had additional bones below each vertebral bone, known as chevrons. The chevrons were Y-shaped and likely acted as muscle attachment points to help support the animal's extreme size. Kenneth Lacovara was the first human to set eyes on the remains of Dreadnoughtus when he discovered two near-complete skeletons in the rocks of the Cerro Fortaleza Formation in 2005. Due to the immense size of the bones which he discovered, it took him and his team four whole summers to evacuate the skeletons in their entirety. The type specimen was much more complete than the paratype, but both represented partial skeletons. When the bones were finally retrieved from the earth, the team needed to use a pulley system of ropes and utilize the help of mules to transport each fossil to a truck. In 2009, when the skeletons were finally unearthed in their entirety, the bones were loaded onto an ocean freighter bound for Philadelphia, USA. Here, Lacovara would study and describe his find. Lacovara published his paper announcing the discovery of Dreadnoughtus Shrani in 2014. He noted that while the skeletons were partial, vast quantities of them had been retrieved, including elements of the vertebrae, ribs, limbs, jaw, teeth, and claws. The skeletons had been unearthed almost fully articulated in the way that they would have been positioned when the dinosaur had died supporting the idea that they were covered quickly by sediment, allowing for the excellent preservation. Upon delivering the bones to Philadelphia, Lacovara created digital copies of them using a 3D laser scanner, and a fully articulated digital skeleton was constructed using Autodesk Maya. By using this technique, they could study the bones without damaging them and it allowed them to continue to study the animal upon returning it to Argentina in 2015. Today, the bones are safely stored at the Museo Padre Molina in Rio Gallegos, Argentina. The name Dreadnoughtus was given by Lacovara on account of the animal's immense size. He noted that fully grown, healthy adult individuals would likely have been the largest and most powerful animals in their environment, being almost impervious to attack. While the name literally means fears nothing, Lacovara took inspiration from the influential model of 20th century battleships known as the Dreadnought. These are famous for outclassing those that came before it. Crews of the first Dreadnought ships likely had little to fear in the seas in which they operated, being the biggest and toughest vessels of the time. Lacovara also noted upon naming the dinosaur that he thought the time had come for herbivores to get the recognition their due for being the toughest creatures in their environments. The specific name, Shrani, was given in honor of the American entrepreneur, Adam Shran the man who provided financial backing for the expedition to go ahead. Dreadnoughtus was a resident of the Cerro Fortaleza Formation, formerly known as the Parry Ike Formation, in what is today the Argentinian province of Santa Cruz. The site represents a floodplain with a vast network of rivers that cut through the land. On the fringes would have been lush, humid forests, which Dreadnoughtus would have readily browsed from, periodically coming down to the water's edge to drink. High amounts of seasonal rainfall 
would have caused these rivers to burst their banks regularly, which may have led to the very event that buried the two known specimens of Dreadnoughtus. Petrified wood and fossilized roots show that tall trees were common in the Cerro Fortaleza formation, and they likely supported not only Dreadnoughtus, but a whole host of other herbivores. Dreadnoughtus was not the only megasauropod in these lands however. It shared the Cerro Fortaleza formation with the equally spectacular Puertosaurus riuli, a gigantic but much lesser known titanosaurian sauropod. This dinosaur is known from limited fossil content, including vertebral elements of the neck and tail, along with a single dorsal vertebrae. It's hard for scientists to determine its exact size due to the fragmentary nature of its remains, but Puertosaurus may have measured around 30 meters or 98 feet long, making it slightly larger than the subadult type specimen of Dreadnoughtus. Amongst the undergrowth and trees were the much smaller Talancowan, a basal iguanodont that reached a maximum size of 4 meters or 13 feet as it snipped at branches and shrubs using its broad beak-like mouth, it would have needed to be careful, not only of the booming footsteps of gigantic sauropods, but of predators too. Unusually, gigantic predators are not known from the Cerro Fortaleza formation. Typically, when gigantic sauropods are found in the fossil record, there tends to be a theropod superpredator in the vicinity. Think Gigantosaurus, Mapusaurus, and Tyrannotitan as a few examples. The largest predator known from Dreadnoughtus' domain was the Orcoraptor, an 8.5 meter or 28 foot long mega raptoran, far from the sizes of the aforementioned giants, but still a capable and efficient predator in its own right. Amongst the Dreadnoughtus skeletons unearthed by Lacovara in 2005 were a series of theropod teeth, potentially belonging to Orcoraptor. This is potential evidence that these carnivores were able to scavenge the parts of the Dreadnoughtus skeletons that weren't discovered by Lacovara, but they were certainly not large enough to bring down these animals in life. Aside from an undetermined species of Abelosaurid, the only other theropod known from Cerro Fortaleza is Ostrochirus. At 5.5 meters or 18 feet long, this was the smallest carnivorous dinosaur known from the region, and likely hunted small animals and young dinosaurs in the denser forested areas of the formation. There is often a lot of controversy and debate surrounding the accurate lengths and weights of the very largest dinosaurs that ever walked the earth. Dreadnoughtus, for a time, was considered to be perhaps the largest dinosaur that the world had ever seen, given its immense size as a sub-adult. But this may not be the case. The largest known dinosaur, as of the time of this video, is Argentinosaurus huinquilensis, a gigantic South American sauropod that lived even earlier than Dreadnoughtus, between 97 and 93 million years ago. It may very well be the largest land animal that has ever walked the earth, measuring between 30 to 35 meters or between 98 to 115 feet in length. On top of this, it weighed between 65 and 80 tons. It was truly a behemoth of the dinosaur world. However, Argentinosaurus is known from much more fragmentary remains compared to the Dreadnoughtus, and the remains we have for the largest known Dreadnoughtus was not fully grown. It is possible that these two animals were on average similar in size, but further Argentinosaurus material and adult Dreadnoughtus fossils will be needed before a certain estimate can be made. Amongst the titanosaurs that have provided near complete skeletons from adult individuals is Patagotitum maiorum, an animal whose reconstructed skeleton recently toured museums across Europe. 
when it was first described in 2017. Patagotitan was dubbed the largest titanosaur to have lived, with an estimated body length of 37 meters, or 121 feet. This length, however, was downsized slightly later, when subsequent studies showed that the animal in fact measured 31 meters, or 102 feet in length. This placed it just below Argentinosaurus on average, but the two species were of a very similar size. A weight estimate of between 50 to 57 tons was also calculated, which can be said with a degree of certainty, considering how well known Patagotitan is as a genus. As a comparison, one of the largest known non-Titanosaurian sauropods was Sauroposeidon proteles. Described in 2000, this early Cretaceous herbivore from the Gulf of Mexico is thought to have measured between 27 to 34 meters, or between 89 to 112 feet in length. It may have weighed between 40 and 60 tons, placing it firmly among the heaviest and largest reptiles that walked the Mesozoic Earth. These size estimates, however, are based on the idea that the animal was closely related to the iconic late Jurassic sauropod Brachiosaurus. If Sauroposeidon turns out to be less closely related to Brachiosaurus, these size estimates may need to be recalculated to align with future understandings of the dinosaur. Dreadnoughtus was truly a spectacular animal, whether or not it was among the largest dinosaurs ever to walk on our planet. Lacovara is right. We do have a tendency to forget how immensely powerful and dangerous these animals may have been in life. While much of the glory tends to go to the large theropods, Dreadnoughtus was likely the largest animal in its environment, and surely fully grown adults were not to be messed with. With any luck, as time progresses, further fossil material belonging to this dinosaur will be discovered, and paleontologists will be able to understand just how big this giant really was.